Mm-hmm. My biggest bargaining chip for the Suns, um, when you're having these awkward conversations with guys that you know you can't afford, mm-hmm. is to sit them down and show them as much tape as I can on Grayson Allen. think a guy that's still trying to go out there and get his bag buys into that i mean the only it's that plus the idea of potentially trying to sell them on more future right if you do the same thing you did last year where it's a two-year deal one year guaranteed player option the second year now we're looking at summer 2026 right and Mm -hmm. isn't that the summer that everything is exciting again and you could be a part of that I don't know. I'm just saying, if you're a salesperson and that's what you're trying to do, that's that's where you go because that's yeah. what you that's what you my, have to my, go to. My biggest bargaining chip for the Suns, um, when you're having these awkward conversations with guys that you know you can't afford, mm. is to sit them down and show them as much tape as I can on Grayson Allen. Mm. That's that's what I'm doing. Here's how you can make your. Own Here's money. how you can make your money. Mm-hmm. Here's how you can go from a guy that's a mid level guy to a twenty million a year guy. Um, in the system with these guys, if you come here and you capitalize on it, is it worth doing that for one year? Uh, you know, one year risk to try to bet on yourself. I, I, I wouldn't be shocked that there are a handful of players that would consider that. Mm-hmm. Do they actually do it? But, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a good point that I didn't think of is, yeah, you could maximize that next deal by coming in here and maybe having an easier path to having a greater success. Like, right. Uh, like you saw with Grayson, I just think that that's that's a tough sell. It's not like, I mean, if James Jones came in and did the Pat Riley drop the rings on the table thing, I don't think it works the same way okay. as uh, as Pat Riley. But it's <laughs> also like the same way that teams will look at a player who's gone through a couple different stops. Be like, oh, but in our system, with my with my guidance, maybe this guy can take the next step forward. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's the same way on the opposite side. You're like, well, your roster last year that you filled out with those vet men's, they're not on my level. I can bring more to you. I can actually help you win a championship with yeah. Katie and Book on my squad. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the, yeah, I'm, the, just, I'm just throwing out. I, no, I, I get it. The, the problem is, like, if you sign any of these guys on a one-year vet minimum deal, you can't then, like, turn around and have – their rights to sign them to a lot more the next summer. So you're basically saying we're going to boost your value for this year and someone else will give you your payday next summer. Or like, you know, you're just here for a while on a bet minimum. minimum, (laughs) That's kind of your fate now. So I, I, again, Tyus Jones is going to get the bag from somebody. The wizards could resign him a team that needs a point guard, like the magic or the spurs that have cap space. They could come calling for him. I don't think it's going to happen, but he is a guy that's, that would take the ball out of the big three's hands in terms of orchestrating the offense. But when they do have the ball, he could also be a spot up shooter as well. Um, really good organizer. And he is a guy that I've gotten a lot of questions about. So I wanted to bring him up on this talk.